Hello, this is Jonathan from Entopology, and today I'm going to show you how to make conformal lattices within any shape. So we can turn something like this into a foam-like lattice, or something a bit stiffer with a more ordered lattice. All perfectly conformal in this relatively complex shape. So backing up, just deleting these in my notebook to just the CAD import, we start by doing two things. We take the CAD part and we convert it to an implicit. I'll just call that implicit part. Now this is in our, um, basically in our rock solid volumetric format. And we're going to use this in one place, but we're also going to use a mesh. And we use that mesh uh, to generate the points within, the, within our lattice. So mesh from CAD, We'll let you convert that right away. Now this is a bit a bit faceted. What we're actually looking for is something where we can take the edges of these uh, of this mesh and turn it into a lattice. So we're going to remesh this into something a little nicer. So Ntop's uh, built-in remeshing functionality is something that you of course use in the simulation pipeline, but you can also use it to make lattices. So it's quite a nice, robust, uh, useful tool there. So we have a, a surface mesh now. We can also turn that into a volume mesh by filling it with tetrahedra and let that run. Well, that's oh, it's done. Okay, so lattice from volume mesh aptly described. That will take the edges of that uh, volume mesh and turn it into lattices. And so I just have the wireframe view on and you can see there's a whole lot of beams in there um, and it's generated very quickly. So if we wanna see how many, looks like just under a quarter million and we can see the time, oh, about three and a half seconds. So zero to a quarter million in three and a half seconds, not bad. Now this is a very stiff lattice. They're comprised of tetrahedron or triangles in 3D, if you will. And uh, sometimes you want to use a lattice for a more foam-like response. And we can do that in Ntop in a pretty similar way. So let's just back up and go to our lattice tab where we'll find Voronoi volume lattice. So you can see this is asking me for two things, some seed points, which I will get by doing random points in body. And of course, asking me for the body. So that's where our implicit comes in. It's asking me for the cell size, approximate cell size. You can see we fill that geometry basically instantly with 45,000 beams. Um, now, if I, so this might come as a surprise, but if I click this, you'll see there's beams going everywhere. And we might not want to build this part, but this is the output of this block directly. There's two options. You can trim it such that you'll have open beams, which you can then use for uh, things like attachment, if you're trying to uh, embed this in some polymer, for example. But what a lot of people ask for and well the title of this video is for a conformal lattice and for that you can see it's asking for an optional mesh now we can just drag in that mesh we don't even need to trim it anymore because it will be perfectly conformal and we'll watch that generate obviously it takes a little more time because it's fitting that foam into this complex volume okay there we have it so that is a foam that fits perfectly inside this complex CAD part. And again, we can just see how many beams we've got. So a bit over 600,000. That one took a little bit longer, but I have a pro tip to speed this up. Uh, so when we made our mesh before, remember we were taking the edges directly and those were becoming our beams. For this block, we don't actually have to do that. We can relax this mesh to be a lot bigger. So we can uh, all we need is a general volume, and you'll see how much faster this will run. So this is one of the nice things about Ntop is that 
you're constructing a procedure to get to your part and there's always ways to optimize procedures and improve procedures uh, and with NTOP you can actually make some pretty powerful ones very quickly so we took about a quarter of our runtime off by doing that little trick now this same workflow is actually usable in some much more complicated shapes as for example everyone's favorite unit cell the gyroid I've turned into a stretch um, not, not quite stretch dominated but quite stiff lattice that's perfectly conformal to the gyroid or you could do the foam which we just did that's using pretty much the same workflow if I open this up you can see there's a slight difference in how I acquired that volume mesh and that is using a voxel grid the only reason for that is that voxel grids can handle very complex shapes uh, better than usual meshes can but that might be a topic of another video in itself okay so thanks very much for for watching and enjoy making things into lattices